Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. I'm your host, Bob Powell, and in this episode, we're gonna go back a little bit over a year to an interview that I conducted with Jim Berkland. He's a scientist with the United States Geological Survey. Back in 1989, Jim predicted the uh, Loma Prieta quake, or uh, the World Series earthquake, in about a week in advance. So uh, this, and he's got a, a stellar earthquake prediction record, running around 80%. So this is somebody that we want to talk to. The most important part of this episode are his insights on uh, a mega quake in the Pacific Northwest. We start out by talking about the pre preparations that FEMA has been making down in the New Madrid fault zone. But Jim, the earthquake predictor extraordinaire, is more worried about a, a slip strike fault in the Pacific Northwest that could cause a tsunami and you know it'd be bad news for a lot of people. So uh, let's see what Jim has to say and we'll be back in just a minute. You don't talk about it. Parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep this frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy. See, they've made that something that that is that is, should, should not be even entertained for a minute. That powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy buff. You're watching The Truth Is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now. Here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. You know what the great thing about having your own show is? You can film the open and the bumpers anywhere you want to. As a matter of fact, I think this season I'm going to be out of the studio a lot because there ain't nothing in the world like fishing with your boy. So while you enjoy this interview with Jim Berkland, me and my son are going to go fishing, see if we can't slay a few bass. Okay, so Mr. Berkman, there's been a lot of speculation on the internet about there being a 188 day cycle. But uh, you don't subscribe to that, do you? I. I believe there certainly is a, a cycle based on the face of the moon. There are equinoctial tides, not only in the seas, but in the solid earth. I've been predicting earthquakes based largely on that since 1974 when I first observed um, a warning that we might have flood tides in the Bay Area due to an unusual astronomical alignment. I was a Santa Clara County geologist at the time and had been greeted in the county by, by six earthquakes in the Bay Area in the fall and uh, early winter of, uh, of 73. And uh, so I made my first prediction because I recognized that the solid Earth was also responding to the gravitational stresses. And uh, so I, that first prediction was for a four to five magnitude quake to occur in the South Bay uh, within one week, and it happened two days later when we got a 4.4 south of San Jose. You forecast an earthquake in a three to four point range this morning. We had an earthquake in a three to four point range this morning. I'm impressed. And I thought this is mighty simple. So I started predicting informally, and I was six out of eight for 1974. It wasn't until 1979 that I added to my repertoire uh, and began to accept that animals were also a method of predicting quakes. Now, do you uh, mean their behavior? I'm sorry to interrupt, but do you mean their behavior or by yeah. mass animal die-offs or both? Abnormal animal behavior. Uh, I was very skeptical about such a thing because I believed in black boxes and that uh, the science uh, would be 
not well served by looking at what animals were doing until I got a call from a physicist from Xerox in uh, September of 1979, and he said uh, he agreed with my upcoming seismic window based on tides because the cats were disappearing again. And I almost hung up on him. Uh, I was, it was interrupting my dinner, and I said, what do you mean? Well, I've been studying for the last six months the lost and found column in the Mercury News, and I found that the numbers of missing cats increases before local quakes. And he mentioned several quakes that I well, and uh, he gave me the numbers before the quakes, and he said just before that Coyote Lake quake of August 7th, August 6th of uh, 1979, it was a 5.9 quake, the strongest in the South Bay uh, since 1911. And I wasn't paying attention to the animals, but I should have because our own cat Rocky had disappeared six days before that quake. And I had never even thought about putting an ad in the paper because cats come and go. But there were, uh, uh, there was 13 missing cats the week before that quake. And, and um, by the way, I'm also writing my latest issue of Syzygy, a monthly newsletter that I started writing in 1990, right after I had predicted and named the World Series earthquake, based not only on the maximum tidal force in three years, but also upon record numbers of missing pets. And strange animal behavior, whales beaching themselves in San Francisco and Santa Cruz and water levels changing and booming sounds up in the Santa Cruz Mountains and the change in the temperature and volume of the Gilroy Hot Springs as it had done before 1906, 1952, and 1979 quakes. Right. Well, you certainly hit a home run with that one. Uh, speculation on the Internet regarding this 188-day cycle is that there is a heavy mass object coming into the solar system that's creating a, a trough of, of tidal forces and that every time the Earth comes around the Sun and, and gets into a particular alignment that these tidal forces are so great it causes the stress that's built up. Nibiru? Nibiru? That's one name for it. Well, it doesn't exist as far as I, I'm concerned. Uh, We've had plenty of satellites going out past the sun and shooting pictures back towards the Earth, and we never have uh, seen this other object that uh, must have disturbed the planets and hasn't seemed to. Let me ask you a question. You were talking about booming noises up in the hills. Yeah. There's been a lot of that recently, too. There's a town in Wisconsin that, as we speak, is hearing noises and, and experiencing shaking, but nothing's appearing on the USGS... Uh, Seismographs. Well, they don't want to recognize hydrofracturing or fracking. Uh, fracking is a very real phenomenon, and it's causing quakes, mainly small ones, but up to about 4.6. And it's something that I did not recognize. I, I hadn't heard the term fracking until about six months ago. But uh, I'm quite aware of the effect of the changes in poor pressures uh, from oh, pumping of a uh, in and out of wells of gas, and uh, and now they're introducing chemicals, which is uh, increasing great pressures and depth, and that allows the gas to return, or, you know, escape. But they are harvesting it. Uh, let me ask you a question about the New Madrid fault or New Madrid, right. and. Uh, uh -huh. That first one in 1812 occurred uh, the day after the new moon. And uh, in reviewing the paper by a uh, professional paper, uh, 494, by a geologist from the U.S. Geological Survey, he wrote 100 years after the three great earthquakes had occurred. And I finally got a copy of that book. And I was surprised to find about page 35, he has a table of the largest earthquakes, and he said six out of the seven followed closely after the newer full moon. So he had my idea back in 1912. Let me ask your opinion on uh, what's going on down in uh, the Ozarks. 
Uh, FEMA has been conducting a lot of drills. They've been buying up millions and millions of meals ready to eat and, and moving men and equipment down to the, to the Ozarks area and, and conducting earthquake drills. Do you think that there's a chance that the new Madrid fault might slip anytime soon? Well, there's always a chance. It's normally about every two to four hundred years, and it's been two hundred years. Um, I'm more concerned about the biggie uh, that's going to hit the northwest uh, on the Cascadia subduction zone. Right, that would cause a tsunami, wouldn't it? Yes, yeah, certainly would. And then no, without a tsunami potential, but the big quake down in the Mojave in Southern California where they haven't had a big quake since 1857. And uh, they are well overdue. The strain on the, the, the fault there released um, a strike slip uh, displacement of 30 feet. It went right through an old sheep corral in 1857, and so they know that the dimension was correct. And with the whole two inches a year of strain on the San Andreas, it's now equivalent to about a 28 feet of movement. And now the Indian Ocean quake, back on the day after Christmas in 2004, was on the day of the full moon. The day of the full moon, and my colleagues tend to ignore that. The last really big quake before then, there was a big tsunami, was the Alaskan quake on March 27, 1964, and that was on the day of the full moon. One would see some sort of a pattern here. How many mega quakes have happened on, on a full moon or a new moon? And when I say mega quake, I mean something in, in excess of eight point on the Richter scale. Well, there were listed, what was the number I saw? Uh, the USGS had a listing, and it was like, oh, 25 of the greatest quakes. Now, this was when I was still a county geologist, and I was compiling this list. They had 25 of these super quakes, and uh, 20 of them had been in a seismic window at the time of Newark full moon. Now, um, let's see. My, my wife was uh, born and raised in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. And she had never felt a quake until she came out here. And I had predicted the, the quake for around the, the full the eclipse of the moon at, on Thanksgiving Day in 1974. And it hit right on schedule. While I was at the movies with my young daughter watching the movie Earthquake. <laughs> well, that's ironic, isn't it? Yes, it was. Well, Mr. Berkman, I thank you very much for taking your time to, to speak with us. Uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to call you back another time because it seems like uh, you've got a lot of information on the topics that my viewers find interesting. Oh, my. Well, global warming is another. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Berkman. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Hello, Jim. Jim was smart. I've never known anybody with a head for dates and events like that guy. It's totally uncanny. So, yeah, his opinion bears a lot of weight with me. A whole lot more than this guy's. Earthquake warning! I'm sorry, I just couldn't resist. So yeah, if you live in the Pacific Northwest, I would have at least 30 days worth of supplies ready to go. That's actually pretty good advice for anybody, anywhere. When I was living in South Carolina a few years ago, we had an ice storm, lost power for three weeks. So, uh, you know, there were no grocery stores open, none of that stuff. And uh, you had to really travel away is to get a gallon of milk and uh, so that's you know a really good advice always have at least 30 days of supplies on hand so that if the power goes out if there's an EMP pulse if there's an earthquake you know the end of the world you never know uh, at least you'll have some kind of a running head start and you won't have to uh, fight the crowds at the stores that are taking the last loaf of bread and the last gallon of milk and we are willing to kill you for it. Okay, I can stand here and run my mouth and tell you the truth all day long, and nobody's gonna hear it if they don't hear it from you. I depend on you to share this show with all your friends. Put it on Facebook, put it on Twitter, Orkut, uh, Pinterest, MySpace. You know, wherever you uh, have a social media network, down here below, below this video, 
there's a share button on, on the YouTube uh, site. You can share this video on 10 different social media platforms. Okay, if you've done it already, thank you. Now do it again. And then put it on your uh, email address list. Send it out to everybody. Then send up smoke signals because people, time is running short. We have to wake up our friends and neighbors and we have to do it now. The time for worrying that people are going to think that you are a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist or a religious nut job is over. I waited too long before I, I, I never did tell my daughter about the truth of Jesus Christ. Now I've got to live with that guilt every single day. I would spare you that. I would spare you that cold hand rip, reaching into your chest and ripping out your heart. You need to share the truth with the people that you love and you need to do it now. I don't know when Christ is coming back, but it could be at any time. You need to share this information with your friends, with your family, the people that you care about. Wake them up. I can't do it. That's up to you. Don't forget to subscribe to The Truth Is Viral right here on YouTube at OldCoreBLT13. At BobPowell.blogspot.com. Subscribe to me on Networked Blogs, on Facebook, on Twitter. And uh, if, you, if you're financially able, please leave a donation. This does cost money. I'm not very good at asking for donations and I'm not very good at making money at this. I'm a reporter. Give me a, a pencil and a piece of paper and I can go out and grab some facts for you. But the truth is that I have been penalized for speaking the truth. When uh, I first started reporting $200 in income from this show, they took away $600 in benefits. They do not want me out there telling the truth. They are making it as difficult as possible for me to get back to work. That's what men do. For a long time, I was unable to. I was in this wheelchair. But I fought back. And I walk. And I talk. And I tell the truth to anybody that will listen. And I need your help to do it. So if you can, if you have the financial ability, please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com, hit that PayPal button, and uh, you know, help keep the truth as viral on the air. Help me keep my promise to my daughter and to my God that I would spread the truth to anybody that would listen to me. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell, and as always, God bless. Semper Fi and hoorah. Thank you for watching The Truth Is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth Is Viral. Like The Truth Is Viral on Facebook and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com Smack Runner Your game is through. Runner, I'm talking to you.